Greetings, brothers and sisters. We're very excited to welcome you to our Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement Temple Hills YouTube channel. I'm joined with Onam. Happy Sabbath, brother. Brother Onam is our new Bible worker here in the Temple Hills, Washington, D.C. area. And my name is Alex. You might have seen me around. And together with Brother Onam, we're starting a new channel. Uh, we're starting a new project, rather, that will be published here on this channel. And the project will be the study of the Bible. We hope to produce these videos on a weekly basis where you can join us weekly to study the Bible with us. Uh, we'd like to invite you to download the Sabbath School Guide or what we call it also the Bible Study Guide in the link below. Or you can also download the app. We will leave it linked to both Android and iPhone or iOS rather if you have either one of these devices. So we invite you to join us as we'll be studying in this year uh, on a weekly basis, we'll also have guest speakers and, and guest participants, but uh, mostly uh, Brother Onam and I will be studying the Bible together through the use of these Bible study guides that we call um, Sabbath, Sabbath Bible Lessons, all right? And the first lesson that we're going to be studying today is titled, A Quiet, Unassuming Youth. So we'll be focusing on the life of David and primarily on the very start of his life, how it all came to be and how he started. But before we do that, we need to invite the presence of the Lord to be among us. Right. And uh, let's bow our heads and uh, I'll, I'll offer opening word of prayer. Father, which art in heaven, we come before you now. We're so thankful that you've given us the opportunity to study thy word. We now kindly invite your presence and your Holy Spirit to be with us for the understanding of this word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. So, Brother Unam, can you please help us understand and reflect on the life of David and how you and I, both young, mm -hmm. can learn something from it and maybe apply it in our own life. Well, um, so the Lord chooses those as we are going to be um, studying this lesson in regards to David's life. Uh, those that are not as the world sees them, but as, you know, as God sees the heart. So many times we are looking exteriorly or from a human perspective but the Lord sees farther than what the eyesight can see so we're going to begin as I was already introduced um, with the first years uh, that are recorded of the life of David and we're going to see how his upbringing uh, was a way of the Lord was preparing him to uh, place him in uh, positions that were to glorify his name. So as uh, Brother Alex had already um, presented to us, the title of our first lesson is called A Quiet Unassuming Youth. And we are going to uh, consider the text, uh, the key text for this lesson, which is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. It tells us, The Lord seeth not as men seeth, for men looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And um, please follow along uh, on the commentary below that it tells us of what was God's purpose. It says, David was susceptible to the influence of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord in His providence trained him for His service, preparing him to carry out His purpose. Christ was the master builder of his character. So, I have a question. There is a word here that has um, that stands out to me. At the beginning, it says David was susceptible to the influence of the Holy Spirit. When are we most susceptible to the Word of God or to the influence of, of the Holy Spirit? When do you think? When we're not yet jaded by sin and we were not yet um, set in our own ways when we're young. Exactly, exactly. And that's what, uh, that is what the first, um, uh, basically the first experiences of life on the life of David, uh, it's, it tells us that uh, because he was still, still young, uh, so the, he had yet um, to receive as, if it were, you know, the molding of the world. So his mind was as pure and the Lord was able to use him and he didn't have any resistance uh, in order, basically, in what the Lord was trying to lead him into. And so where was the training school or the, the atmosphere where David was at the moment where the Lord uh, first started to guide him? Where was this, Alex? 
uh, in the countryside. He was, uh, he was uh, in, um, as the Bible says here, uh, he was dwelling in the hillside and the countryside. And uh, he kept watch over his father's flocks, and he gazed on the, the on the hills surrounding Bethlehem. And uh, it was there that the Lord could reach his heart, exactly. because he was not in the area with lots of heavy food traffic and lots of people that would distract his mind from the uh, heavenly things. And this is something that um, I can attest that when we are the when we are little, basically, uh, we are more susceptible, we're, we're more impressionable to God's Word and to uh, the instructions that we receive from our parents or what we behold in the creation of God. I recall when I was little, I, was, I grew up in a setting where it was apart from the city life, so I was able to, my, my mind was meditating constantly upon what was about me. And this, is, this was, was the experience of David. Um, uh, he was a, a, a shepherd tending the fall of his father, and uh, by the care that he had upon his father's uh, full, uh, flock, then he was also relating that to the care that the Heavenly Father has for, for us. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The, the, the question that is brought up here uh, on the questions for Sunday, the second question under B, it asks us, um, how can young people today benefit from an early education similarly to David's. What is, what is the environment or the setting where the majority of the children, the young people, are emerged in today? Mostly in schools, in brick buildings, and away from any sort of uh, uh, nature of God. Exactly. But here, it, it looks like based on the Psalms, it tells us, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Exactly. So he was able. Sorry. So he was able to witness um, the majestic and creative power of God in the things that were about Him. And so, in our present modern society. Uh, the majority of our children, even of ourselves, are live amongst uh, not the creation of God, but the creation of men. So then our thoughts, as um, it is a, a principle that is active in each one of our minds, as we behold, we become changed. So if we behold the things that we create, we dwell upon those things. But if we behold the things that God created, then we yeah. dwell, dwell on those things. It's interesting how if we read uh, read on in Psalms 19, there's uh, the day unto day out of the speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language. Their voice cannot be heard. It's interesting how it speaks here of the glory of God, that if you're in the right position, if you're in the right place, there is no excuse. There is no reason why you cannot hear the voice of God. It says here, no language nor speech nor voice uh, cannot hear uh, the presence of God as, as we were in the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And it looks like if because David had positioned himself in the right geographic location and in the right spirit, as I think the lesson is going to focus on that in, in the coming um, sections, we'll see how that probably benefited him. Yeah, I was, I was considering this from the point of view of an artist. You know, when they make a painting in a canvas and then people go to museums and then they start to decipher or try to find out what was the, the feeling, the emotions that the artists try to portray in the, their paintings. And so people started basically trying to guess what was, you know, like wh what are the feelings that they can draw from that, from that canvas. But um, in God's nature, what we can see is that, and what it reveals to us is that God is love. We can see that everything, as uh, even Sister White mentions, you know, even after create after the entrance of sin in creation, um, even in in the midst of the thorny uh, plants, there the roses, the flowers came up as an evidence of the love of God towards each one of us. In the steps to Christ, there is a quote that says, "God is love, and is written on every petal, on every leaf, on every bud." 
And that is truly, we see that. Um, notice what it says here also in the, in the note. The heavens may be to the youth a study book from which they may learn lessons of intense interest. The moon and the stars may be their companions, speaking to them in the most eloquent language of the love of God. Amen. This language of the nature, very few understand. Even scientists to this day are not able to explain how this all comes to be. But it is the language of God and the language of love. So if we move on a little bit more, and um, now we go into the second section. It's titled, The Heart of the Psalmist. There it speaks of what? Beyond just the beautiful surroundings, right? Mm -hmm. Many people move into the country hoping to hear the Word of God, or the voice of God, uh, God rather. But what is necessary here in terms of actually receiving the voice of God? Well, um, you know what? We must, one, it's placing ourselves where we may be able to hear His voice. And then once we hear it, we must heed unto it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that it brings out here as well is that not only do we, is, do we, does the process end with us heeding unto it, but there is also another principle that brings out that love begets love, or mm -hmm. love Re, basically, love produces love. So, the psalmist David was by what he was able to experience, by what he was able, by what he was able to, to feel from the environment and the the providence that the Lord had demonstrated to him. He was led to also write of those things as the manifestation of his love or expression of the love that he also felt for what that God which was. fulfilled him. Yeah. He was able to express that in song, and he was a gifted musician who both wrote the, the lyrics mm -hmm. and the melody for the songs that he's written. Exactly. So it says, The simple shepherd sang the song of his composing, the, his composing of the things that he witnessed and that the Lord led him to understand. And the music of his heart made a sweet accompaniment to the melody of his fresh young voice. What's interesting about the, the melody of David, because it was not only um, relevant for David, but as, it, as here, as we go into section B, those that are following us along in your, in your Bible study guides, there it speaks of what? Of the Israelites. Exactly, yeah. And how did this song impact them in a, in a meaningful way? Can you speak to that for a moment, please? Well, uh, there is a... There is a human emotion or a reaction many times when we are in different circumstances. I don't know if you have ever heard or maybe you yourself have done it, where you might, have, you might be in trouble and this brings fear to your life. And so you remember a, 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 a hymn or you remember a scripture and then you try to repeat it as a way to bring comfort to it with, within the condition that you find yourself in. And so in the history of the Hebrew or the Jewish people the, whom the Lord had chosen, um, when David uh, had already you know, composed many of these songs, uh, they, were, they used them as a way to also uh, manifest or within those lyrics uh, also express their gratitude for what the Lord had done for them. And Notice, um, on, um, if we compare the experience of Israelites mm -hmm. to that of David, Though it was in a, in a different time zone, as it were, uh, the timelines did not align one to one, but the experience is very similar. The Lord had taken them, they were quite innocent, they were quite lovely, and the Lord had led them through, uh, the Lord had wanted to open His, His will to them. They refused and they hardened their hearts, and they ended up being in an exile for 40 years and wandering through wilderness and being taught of God and so on. Whereas David, who was also uh, taken by God, had allowed himself to what? To be molded and shaped. And so his experience, though wandering in the wilderness, was for the edifying of his character. Mm -hmm. It was, for, it was fulfill, uh, fulfilling to him, whereas for the Israelites. But nevertheless, notice that this, the note says here, uh, actually those that are following us along in the second section, it says in the middle, it says, Who can measure the results of those years of toil and wandering among the lonely hills? The communion with nature and with God 
the cares of his flock, the perils and deliverances, the griefs and joys of his lowly lot were not only to mold the character of David and to influence his future life, but through the Psalms of Israel's sweet singer, they were in all coming ages to kindle love and faith in the hearts of God's people, bringing them near to the ever-loving heart of him in whom all his creatures live. So this uh, tells me that his experience can be ours. Mm -hmm. He's um, not all of it, right? <laughs> we, we will learn that he had some uh, less than um, desirable experiences, that we can avoid those. The Lord can uh, lead us away from it. But this experience of communion with God and having a pure heart can be mine today. And I think that's what we're going to be focusing today and in, in the coming weeks on, on, on a ways to clearing our heart, to making our heart receptible and susceptible to the will of God. Exactly. And um, yeah, so the, the Psalms were used in the uh, worship or, you know, within the uh, sanctuary, you mm -hmm. know, the, the Israelites um, in order, that's how they, they were using it in order to bring, bring the, the thought of that the Lord is the one that is in control of everything as, as the psalmist had understood in the midst of, of the creation of, of, the, of the sovereign of heaven. Realizing our finite perspective. Uh, for, you, for those of you that are following, we are on Tuesday, um, and we're going to study now and consider uh, when the Lord now sends a messenger, Samuel, who is going to anoint David as a result of the, the leading that the Lord had already done or the grooming that he had already done in those years of solitude in the wilderness as a way of preparation for this great task that was before David. And uh, what, was, what was the, um, the lesson that we encounter here? Ed? It's interesting you said to anoint David. He didn't know he was going to anoint David. That is correct. He came to anoint a king based on the, the guidance of God, but they, he, he didn't know who. And when he started to look for one, what does the Bible here tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 16? Uh, we read in um, verse 5. Uh, uh, take a look with me, 1 Samuel 16, 5. And he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come uh, with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So Samuel had one task, as it looks uh, like based on what we're reading here, to find a king mm -hmm. out of the children of, of uh, Jesse. Jesse. And he looked at this guy, and he was good looking. He was in a good stature, right? That's what the Bible says. He was mm. pleasing to look upon. If we read the, the, the notes, it tells us that he was a good of man, a man of posture and stature he was uh, educated in you know in what was available back then and um and even says he had a princely bearing so he yes. you know he was able to uh give the appearance of a king and this is the thing so if we just go back for a few uh, moments on why this wh how come we are the lord is choosing or basically needing to select another king for the Israelites is because the Israelites had used this as it were parameters or that condition in order to select their first king which is mm -hmm. Saul and Saul was what was what was the reason why the Israelites so uh, he'd fall into witchcraft but exactly he had chosen uh, I mean fall into witchcraft but f originally they have chosen him because he was also of a princely appearance he was well looking he was he was too uh, tall, very tall, highest among the, all the those in Israel. So then Samuel, also looking from a human side, also saw this as a way to, okay, this is someone also that is going to bring that appearance of a kinship into the... Onam, as you're talking about this, uh, this steps, I'm uh, reminded of this note that we read here in the first section under um, section three, realizing our finite perspective. Notice this uh, second, uh, rather sentence, half sentence. This indeed 
the man whom God has chosen as successor to Saul, and he waited for divine sanction that he might anoint him. It's an interesting choice of words the prophet writes here, because that's exactly what we do. We come to God with a certain idea, and then we wait for that to be fulfilled. Do you notice what Samuel is doing here? He said, based on my criteria, this looks like this is a good king. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait for God to anoint him. Yep. But that's not how God works. God, in fact, works differently. And friends, he works the same in your life and my life. The, here, the Bible is teaching us through the experience of uh, Samuel that we are not to bring to Jesus our plans and say, Lord, I'm expecting you to bless them. But we are rather to pray to say, dear Lord, not my will, but let thy will be done, as he had taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Exactly. So um, that's the lesson that we learn. That's the lesson that Samuel found out uh, because he had already his preconceived ideas. And then the Lord says, no, 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 not as you see fit, but as I see fit because I see farther than you can. So the, the Samuel finds this out where he, all the sons of Jesse go before him, but uh, he hasn't heard or basically given the green light from the Lord as to which one to anoint until all of them goes by. And what, what happens? The Lord hasn't chosen either one of them. So that's where he is uh, left to ask Jesse, do you have or where is the other? Do you have any other? And so that's where he is led to say, uh, basically, uh, we are led here to see where David was and David is brought before his presence. And that's when the Lord uh, says, yes, this is the one, even though it doesn't seem like a prince as of now, but this is the one that I have chosen because of what? If we compare what it mentions at the first cent of the first questions of um, Eliab's, it says Eliab's was not, was very proud. And if he would have been chosen, he would have acted the same way as Samuel, exacting an exacting ruler. And so in the case of David, David was a submissive, submissive child and had learned to the obey and depend upon the Lord by the environment that he had been led to by the Lord. Amen. I think if we, if we go on and we, we go on to the fourth section, which is titled A Surprise Choice, there uh, it describes to us God's choice and the wisdom of God in mm -hmm. the plan that he had put forth to, to Jesse. You've already, or rather to Samuel and Jesse, you've already started touching upon that a little bit. But uh, what did he ask and, and what was going on? How was David described here in, in relation to uh, his brothers? So if we if we go to the actual the you know the reading that is that is presented to us for uh, for this question uh, in on under Wednesday, Samuel eight, uh, chapter sixteen that is uh, in verse eight, uh, it brings to us the fact that it says that um, Samuel was in verse twelve says and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with a beautiful countenance and goodly look, goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him for this is he. Now this was his outward appearance, but here in the note it tells us more about his character. And it tells us um, that he was, give me one second here, uh, he was very, uh, he, he had in a sense, it mentions about his countenance was beautiful, but he was expressive of humility, honesty, and true courage, which is what from human perspective was not able to be seen as, say, as we see that Samuel failed to see those things, but the Lord had already seen these things because the Lord is able to see far beyond the outward, the outward appearance. That's an interesting point you bring out. These character traits, um, which you've listed here, humility, honesty, and true courage, those are not only relevant in the work of God or in a, you know, in a church capacity, as it were. Those are necessary in every aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. but, and if we allow themselves to those character traits to be developed within us, they will make us be successful wherever we are. 
uh, and we will then be able to show the character of God wherever we go with those that will be uh, speaking and um, in, in, you know, being in an encounter. Now, tell me about this same traits that you just mentioned and how are those relevant to uh, parents and children and, and how is it even relevant to the church capacity? Now, we spoke here in terms of uh, the kingly uh, capacity, but how is it relevant on a day-to-day -day basis? The character traits that are brought up here of David, um, these are not something that are easily spotted from anyone. Um, it actually requires, um, requires uh, basically a, a farther knowledge of this person, not just in one-time uh, observance. So within our sphere, uh, you know, with ourselves, with our children, uh, these things uh, of humility, honesty, and courage are only developed as we are in communion with the one that is able to give us these things. Because what we are able to acquire from the world or what we are able to develop on our own strength, it's only what the, the character traits of the enemy. Now, why is it important for us then to understand that as this word needed for him that was going to be chosen for, to be the king of Israel, why is it needed for us today? Because the Lord is also using or looking for those that are, what, that are humble. Why? Because those are the ones that do not have the pride and that allow themselves to be guided or that allow themselves to be molded into what the Lord wants us to become. Honest. There is a there is a lot of a, a lot of attraction or very much um, allurement that the enemy presents to us where it leads us to be uh, dishonest. deceptive, dishonest, and so those are traits that even though they may not be exhibited r immediately, but that the enemy can use to ruin the character or the life of a person which. Uh, forbids them or uh, re or um, basically prevents them from being a useful instrument in the cause of God. It, the same thing with courage. Interesting, as you mentioned that on um, uh, in a note here it says, "Not to be ministered unto, but to minister is the great lesson which we are to learn and to teach." A very short paragraph, a very short sentence rather from a paragraph, but it teaches us here that society as we know today. Um, those that are, you know, watching us, those, uh, you may have seen this or may have experienced yourself. A lot of us want something for ourselves. How can I benefit? How can it benefit me? How can I gain the, mo uh, the most out of this transaction or out of this friendship or out of this whatever? But here we find that uh, the choice made by the by Lord uh, in regards to the to the king, it was that of the humble spirit, the one who was willing to minister, who was who trained himself to be to minister uh, by being a uh, you know working with the sheep and and so on, and so that is looks like it, the same is being true today. That character is invited to be within each son and daughter of exactly. God. Exactly, and those are enduring principles that are that were true back then and that are true now. And that's what the, the note brings about. It says, hey, let the, let the youth be impressed with the thought that they are not their own. So in everything that we do is not to, think, uh, to seek our advantage, but to seek how we may, as you brought out, brother, uh, serve others as this were the characteristics of our Lord Jesus Christ in, uh, in His ministry on this earth and that He manifested towards Towards humanity. The note that, that you started reading goes on to say, They belong to Christ. They are the purchase of His blood, the claim of His love. They live because He keeps them by His power. Their time, their strength, their capabilities are His to be developed, to be trained, to be used for Him. Mm -hmm. The moment we realize that and we live as we have, with now a changed purpose, because we now know we live for Him. We do whatever it is that our business is set to be done, but we do it now for God. Our entire well-being will be transformed. I'm sure you have experienced that in your age, in your life. I have experienced that 
it truly is a beautiful thing. So, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters that are listening to us, that are following us along, give God a chance. In this new year, in this new quarter, as we're starting this Bible study guide, come with us on a journey and give God the opportunity to speak to you. You know, so far, so we covered so many topics here that Brother Onam helped us bring out. And perhaps we take away one thing, that in this new year, I choose to be three things. What does it say here? Honest, Honest. humble, and courageous. If I can walk away from today's Bible study with one thing, is that I want my character to be like that. That no matter where I go, whether I am a cashier at the store, or I am a business owner, or I am a homemaker, anyone that meets someone that, that knows me can say, this brother or this sister is honest, courageous, and humble. Let's wrap up here as we talk about the humble and modest as, as before. What do we know about David as he um, was growing in age? What do we know about uh, the, the attitude of young David versus that of older David? What have we to compare? So uh, the thing that it's brought up here, uh, and I know that many of you know the Psalm 20, 23 by, by memory or that have heard it before, but uh, we see that here he's, he's, um, he's given us the image that he has learned to depend upon the Lord. As he says, that he is his shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, a shepherd leads flocks and fl uh, the flock of sheep. So sheep are those that are easily led or they obey what, where the shepherd leads them to. So that was the experience of David in the beginning. In the middle of his life, he went outside of that but as he went through hard experiences he came back to that same experience where he be, where he that's started. a very interesting point you bring up because if we read psalm 71 5 notice which experiences does he recount for thou art my hope we read 71 5 thou art my hope O lord god thou art my trust from my youth he recounts the experiences he had as a young mm -hmm. child you know, when he was uh, being a shepherd there to the flocks of his, of his father. And he recounts that. And that is so important to have a good beginning, to have a good foundation. That's why we have the Bible studies. That's why we go to church. Not because uh, it's become a routine and, and, and that will save us. No, but to have an experience, to, to continue to be walking with God and to be challenged and, 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 and study the Word of God. Now, as we wrap up here, the last lesson and the question asks, explain the aim and result of Samuel's secret mission. What was Samuel's secret mission and what was the result of it? So his objective there was to uh, go in, wait for the word of God that he was going to lead him to see who was to be chosen as the new king of Israel. Now, as we have already uh, discuss um, this was mm -hmm. David who was chosen after uh, his brethren uh, well the, their character traits um, disqualify them but uh, here we are also brought to the point of uh, that even though now David was chosen this did not lead him to uh, Pryness or uh, to be boastful, up, yeah, boastful, but he continued, even though he wasn't to be brought to the to the throne right away. He was just anointed, which was basically they had already chosen him to be the next king. But uh, he went back to his daily duties as faithful as when he was not chosen as a king. Excellently said. Uh, on um, Notice what it says here in the note. Notwithstanding the high position which he had to occupy, he quietly continued his employment, content to await the development of the Lord's plan in his own time and way. As humble and modest as before, he is anointing the shepherd boy returned to the hills and watched and guarded his flocks as tenderly as ever and i believe uh, sorry brother i believe that that's 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 the experience that the lord wants to all of us to to experience where we may not be brought to high positions or places of responsibility right now but that doesn't mean that the Lord has not chosen us yet. It's just that it hasn't been revealed to us. Mm -hmm. We might be chosen now, but He's just trying to develop us and groom us and bring us 
to fit that position that He's preparing for each one of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Anam, for helping us study this. It's titled, A Quiet, Unassuming Youth. We're very excited to be studying the life of David, and I think there's lots to learn because David was not always this, this humble, innocent boy that, we are descri- that is being described here. He did commit some grievous sins for which he ended up paying dearly, and we will study that. And I think we will reflect in the example of his life we will see each and every one of us at, at some point, at, each, at some stage of our life. And we will see how the Lord had led him and how the Lord can and will lead you today as well. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and close with another word of prayer, Brother Nam. And uh, I'd like to you to offer a closing word of prayer, if you don't mind. Let's bow our heads. Our merciful Heavenly Father, we are very grateful that you have allowed us to consider the early years of the life of David and to lead us to see Uh, why you chose him and why it is relevant for us as well today to understand uh, those uh, traits of characters that he possessed that you want to develop in each one of us. Please help us to be as submissive and humble as he was and to allow you to guide our lives and to lead us where you see fit for us to be. Please uh, bless each one of those that will be studying the lesson uh, with us during this entire Um, quarter and that we may all be blessed by understanding your will for our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you friends for joining us. We hope you continue to stay tuned with us and come back each week as we'll be publishing these videos. We hope to get better at producing this content and to be a blessing to each and every one of you. God bless. God bless.